Hi, welcome to episode three of our series of informative videos for starting, scaling, seeking investment and exiting your business. We want to give you a whistle-stop tour of all the things that we think are very, very important when starting a business. And one of the things that we explored in episode one was the importance of a shareholders agreement, specifically for more than one founder and upwards. This is an aligned platform to be built upon. So by having an agreement, you've discussed all your goals and you've mirrored in that. And when you seek investment or bringing in founders, then you add them to that goal. You add them and get them to invest in that platform. However, as a lawyer, sorry, we have to think worst case scenario. What if one of you wants to leave? Worse, what if someone dies or there's a divorce? Again, putting clauses in this agreement as to how we deal with a dispute, how someone leaves, actually enables things to be a lot more smoother in the future, because things do change. So we would have things like good lever and bad lever provisions. If you leave on good terms, we can set out how your shares are bought out. If you leave on bad terms and try to set up in competition, then we can protect the business and we can maybe take back shares. There's deterrence there and there's mechanisms and there's protections for the business. If you are obviously going to seek in investment and you're later going to exit the business, when that happens, how that happens, all of that can be documented in there, such as a drag along clause. This means that if a VC, for example, buys you out, or if one of you is offered the business to be staying on and the other one not, drag along means that you both have to be treated the same. You both get the same financial compensation that the other does for the shares. That gives you comfort as founders, you will be treated equally and be looked after upon investment. There'll be restrictions, as I've said, so if someone does depart, they can't take trade secrets, there's confidentiality, and they can't just simply set up in competition with you. Mechanisms to resolve disputes are very important. Now, especially if you're 50-50, just think if you cannot agree and one of you can't buy out the other or you don't agree to buy out the other, then the company will fold, but there's there nowhere to go. So do we get a third party in? Do you have different voting rights? What's the mechanism we can put in place to avoid a dispute in the future so that the company can still thrive? This goes back to what I said about good lever and bad lever provisions as well, which is a deterrent, especially for new incoming founders to be clear what you expect and what you need. Within the shareholders agreement, it's also really important to set out when all shareholders decisions and votes are required, when a majority only is required and when you have certain provisions where you can, as a director, a board or shareholder, make decisions or enter into contracts without other people's signatures. There are, of course, statutory ways of doing this, but it's far better to document that, have a conversation and put that in both the articles, if possible, the director's agreements if you're having one, but particularly in this founder's agreement. Before you actually sign a shareholders agreement, before you bring in other founders or seek investment, you're going to have to have some tough questions. Now, I always say to clients, it's far better to have the, these conversations away from third parties, whilst you're friends, and potentially why the business is not worth a lot of money. How much control are you willing to give away if an investor now or in the future comes? Because that comes with very different propositions, with controls, with administration. A VC will want to sit on the board with you, you'll have to report to them, whereas an angel might just give you passive money or open doors. What's your exit and sale plan? One of you might want to sell, one of you doesn't. One of you might want to go and live on a beach in a few years, the other one wants to stay in the business. Having an honest conversation now enables you to structure the documents around this, approach the right investors and founders, and it just makes for a far easier process building the business to the way you both wish it for it to go. Now, what if one of you is asked to stay on the business and one of you is asked to leave by a VC or a person purchasing the business? We can put triggers in there to make sure that you're not forced out of your own business, or we can actually get really good compensation clauses put in there so that you can go happy. Um, but also, again, have those conversations. What would that look like? You don't want to have a dispute and fetter a deal if that's what you want, if you haven't discussed this in the future plan. Um, and again, as I go back to, you know, what can you contract the company to without each of yours consent? What level of contract can you negotiate with without the majority consent? What are your roles in the business? We would normally suggest you document this in director service level agreements as an employee of the business. 
but sometimes there's certain provisions we would put in the shareholders agreement just for ultimate certainty. Now we as a law firm particularly work for founders. We obviously work for the company but the idea is to protect you as founders as you grow so that as incoming investors come in you understand your rights, you're protected and you're essentially not forced out of your own business. This will be understanding drag along and tag along clauses. This will also be about how you retain any form of control. Are there any golden handshakes? Are there any blocked out shares for you? We probably have to make sure you understand good lever and bad lever provisions and how can a majority investor coming in actually ask you to leave and what are your rights? We need to make sure that everything is favorable to you but that's not always possible on investment. So we need to make sure you understand the risks you understand that the document is drafted in a certain means and you have to draw the battle lines. What are you willing to accept versus what are you willing to compromise? How long are you going to stay in the business if someone buys it out and you're not happy if you commit it to one year or three years? What happens if you want to walk away? These are all the sort of things that we have tough questions with you immediately before investment but it would help to have those at an early stage. Other issues that you should consider in is tax structuring. Are you going to have a buyout? Are you exiting? Are you selling? You know, all of these sort of things are very important from a tax point of view and could be structured within the shareholders agreement and your other corporate and commercial documents. I've mentioned previously cross-option insurance. So if one of you does pass away, the company essentially has to pass the shareholding to your estate. They probably don't want it or know how to run the business. So how's the company going to buy that out and give the estate money? Cross-option insurance will do that. If you are married and you have children and you are growing the business, please do update your will just to make sure your wishes for the hard work you've put into the business are adhered to. Articles, make sure the articles are updated and modified every time you change things to allow you to appoint additional directors for you to take in investment. Model articles will need to be adapted as you grow. This also gives you clarity and security, not only in the way you build the business, mechanisms for the future if things go wrong but also your security as a founder. I cannot impress upon you enough how important a shareholders agreement is. Please do take advice, don't download templates as it's really important for you to understand exactly what you're signing. If we can help please let us know. Everything we do for our commercial work is fixed fees. There's no obligation to have a chat with us if you'd like to explore this more. Thank you.